The problem with most modern drills is they have no sense of balance. But don't worry, your great-grandparents had the solution. There is nothing natural about drilling with a gun, especially a gun that has a lot of weight in the handle. I mean, you're trying to push force in, but your vector is more angling. I mean, this is an ergonomic nightmare when you think about it. Imagine having to hold it completely perpendicular, but pressing down on this side. So a lot of times we'll put our hand over here, but we still have weight over there. And just trying to control the depth, a lot of times you will waller it out just because the hand's moving a tad bit. This is not a very easy way to get perfect holes for furniture making. But don't worry, your great-grandparents did invent the solution. Now most of y'all would just look at this as just a old egg beater, but you need to understand they have spent more time refining this design than we have spent refining this design. They used these for two, three hundred years, and this, made in the early uh, early 20th century, is the pinnacle of that that design. And you can find them out on the market fairly inexpensively, and they're very easy to restore. Let's talk about some of the design features. Now, this little knob right here, yes, you can use it if you're uh, drilling horizontally to hold it and register this in your body to stabilize it. Works very simple. But the sizing of these knobs was really important because if you look at the design, if I bring the handle to the top, this is a lot longer than this one, but this is a little bit heavier. So it's going to find a balance point. That just happens to be fairly perpendicular. You want to try that with this design? In hand tools, there's this general adage that the more points of contact you can create, the more stable and accurate you can cut. With hand saws, that's why you generally leave your finger on the board and it's touching the hand, uh, the plate as you saw to gain control. It's why you have your front leg here and your back leg here to form a nice triangle brace. How many points of contact can you have with this one? If you use two hands, well, your two hands are practically touching. They are one point of contact. Then you have the drill bit right there. So it's kind of a balancing act right there. How many points of contact can you have with a hand drill? Well, most of us will put it on the board, find its nice balance point, and then you put your forehead on your hand. That way, your feet, your forehead, and this right here become multiple points of contact. The reason why you do your forehead is because you're taking advantage of your ears. Your ears can tell even the slightest bit of motion. That's why, that's why we can stand up. It's balance. So, if I put the thing on the board, put my forehead right there, I can stabilize it and try doing this with a power drill. Making one revolution backwards to let the spurs score a nice hole and then just going forward. Not putting any weight down, but my forehead can control that it goes straight down. It's amazing with a little bit of practice how much more accurate you can get a hole with these old tiny egg beater bits. I suggest you pick one up and try it out. So for today's bonus, I'm going to talk about knitting books. You know those kind of books that when you take your daily meditation for five minutes or so, you just want something to read. Something that's short, sweet, gives you a little bit of entertainment, a little nugget of information, but you can lay down and come back to without really losing a lot. One of the best ones I know of is With the Grain by per Curtis Beckford. Uh, I'm not exactly sure that's how you pronounce his last name. But this is a book that if you are new to woodworking or even if you've been in it for a while, has a wealth of information. It talks all about trees for the craftsperson. And he has a huge amount of information 
on all the different species so he can tell you all their characteristics from a crash person's point of view uh, just all these now they're all domestic species to the u.s which i really like those of y'all in other countries you know it might be entertaining educational some of them are cr cross the information kind of transfers to what trees go in your area and in the back he does have a few chapters on harvesting trees and drying them but it's all the different species that we use here in the states for furniture that makes this book so interesting this is one of those resources that i go to back i return to time and time again even after all these years and if you're just getting into woodworking you don't quite know which species work like how they work here's your resource with the grain from curtis beckford